Hello YouTube, I'm done. It's over here again, and I'm gonna do some unpacking of the decks that were in here from my previous video. I'm not sure what color we're gonna start off with. I think we're just gonna open it up and grab a random stack of cards and open it up and show them off, I guess. So we're gonna try to set that up in a cool way. So that can be in the background all neat. Again, instruction manual. Let's go with the middle. I'm going to do this in three separate videos again because each of these things have a hundred cards in them. And, well, that's an awful lot to go through 300 cards. Uh, from what I've been told, there are two copies of every card in here. So if the number is a hundred and there's two copies of everything, then it would most likely stand to reason that there are 50, 50 different units, cards, whatever, in each pack. So... We'll go over them essentially two at a time. We'll see how long that takes and move, move on from there. So this is the blue stack. And if I am, let me see the rule book here. It actually says that the blue clan is, um, I guess the blue clan is the woo. All right, so you've got red, which is the we, green, which is shoe, and blue, which is woo. So this will be the woo contingency of cards, I guess. So let's find where it opens. Do, 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 do. Ah, right here. All right. It's got one of the little pull strips, which is... When you saran wrap cards, this is definitely the way to go about it. That way you don't have to keep picking for edges and all that kind of crap. Very annoying, but... This way just seems to work out nice. You get all the cards out nice and slick. You don't have to potentially risk damage in them or anything. Now this really is quite a handful of cards. It is a hundred cards. They are, of course, uh, you know, typical card quality. They don't feel flimsy or anything, so. Yeah, it's a pretty thick stack. All right, so we've got first character card here. Now I did go over the rule book on my own. Like I said, this is, uh, this denotes that it's the Wu clan or uh, kingdom, I guess. This is the costs. Now you'll see a color box here and then a blank box over here. Resources in this game are played both face down and face up, but the caveat to that is whatever you play in your resources that would be played face up, you cannot play that into your battle zone. So there's the kind of strategy for it. So if you were to say play Madam Wu as a resource generating that blue color when you're paying the costs here, like this says you need to pay one blue. So one blue, no, nothing else. You just have to exhaust one blue card to put her into play. But you wouldn't be able to play one and then play her into your battle zone because she's already face up, providing resources, energy, whatever the case may be. So that's kind of the catch-22. So even though you can load your deck with a bunch of these uh, cards up to the amount down here in the bottom, which uh, most of them say four, uh, a couple of them say two, so card limits are in there. For the 50-card deck you put together, uh, you can have four copies of, of this character in there, but if one of them is face up, the rest of these can't even be played to the battlefield. So it takes the dual master mentality and really puts a, even more thought into that because if you, you know, play it as a resource, her effect might come in handy later. You won't be able to get her out of resource except by another card effect. All right, so uh, this other symbol up here is uh, Calvary. So she's a Calvary unit. Um... Let's see, it also has the ability there, Mother's Touch upon Retreat. So when she loses a battle, retreating, goes to the discard pile and all that, choose a face-up, uh, either of those three named cards from your faction area, which is your resources, like I was just saying. Uh, your faction area is your resource row, uh, to go into your hand, and then this Madam Wu replaces it. So she's kind of, uh, you put her into play, do whatever you want, block with her, whatever the case may be. And then she can swap out for another thing. So, you know, constantly trading in and out. So again, she's definitely not one you want to put in your faction row because then you won't be able to utilize the switch effect for something potentially better later on. So anyway, there are two copies of that. And we'll go to this next character over here. Again, it costs one blue to play it. And this is a Spearman card. It also says what they are down here at the bottom. So that is a general spearman. Uh, retrieve ashes upon deployment. So when you play this creature, uh, retrieve a copy of the character there from the discard pile, put it into your hand. So there's going to be a lot of cycling that this blue stuff gets to do here. All right, so yeah, we're going to 
do that so I can keep the stacks in order, I guess. All right, next is the Zhang Chang. This is a archer, but you have noticed it's got two ones there. So this is a two cost unit. One must be blue that you pay. Um, let's see. Rumored strategy, another upon deployment. Draw and reveal two cards from the top of your deck. If you reveal any tactics cards, you may keep one. Return the remaining cards either to the top or bottom of your deck as you desire. And again, down here is the number of cards that are allowed in the deck. Now this over here is the attack and health value. So it's got a thousand health, a thousand attack strength and all that. And this other little number here is how many parts of the wall you'll break when you attack your opponent's wall because you have two attack targets in here. When your generals attack, they can either attack your opponent's wall or they can attack other rested units that your opponent has in play. Uh, so this, if it were to attack a unit, would battle with a thousand strength and if it takes a thousand damage, it's uh, retired. Um, otherwise, if it attacks the wall, it's going to do one card damage to your seven card wall. And obviously two copies of that. Uh, another cavalry unit for two. Hero on the front line, another upon deployment, so that's pretty cool. And a little power up. Another archer unit for two. Now, um, abilities that are pretty, I mean, it's rather straightforward for card game players, but I'll go over it real quick. Uh, the boo, yeah, the bow of Wu. Uh, this is during your main step. You can exhaust this character, and then you are able to also pay one resource of any color. Usually that'll be your face down resources that you would play in your faction row. And that's uh, equals delay tactic. Um, I'm not entirely sure what delay tactic necessarily means. I believe the rule book said that delay tactic is something that'll last until the end of your next turn. But don't quote me on that. I'll have to go back through. And it says deal 100 special damage to one enemy general. I'm not entirely sure why I would say special, but one enemy general takes 1,000 damage. So potentially, you know, burning the opponent's characters, uh, reducing them, making them take damage, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure delay tactic, but it is in the rule book. I just... I've been over the rule book once, so I have to do it some more to be able to play. Okay, another archer unit. Concentrated volley. Same thing, you pay two additional resources to pop the aforementioned ability. Deal special damage to one enemy general equal to the number of archers in your battle area. So again, name down there, also the symbol up there. So the more archers you have, the more damage that particular ability can do. You fan, three cost, flames of Wu, exhaust. Delay tactic, deal 2,000 special damage to up to two exhausted enemy generals. That seems pretty good. Another cavalry unit. Loyal aid. Yeah, that's a spearman character. Defensive play ongoing, reduce special damage dealt by enemy tactics or generals by 500. All right, uh, that's another thing. Um, read in the rule book that they these are units, and later on we'll be getting into generals and all that kind of stuff. Um, those tactics. So the generals would be. Um, huh. All right, so I guess they're all like units, but you can actually equip some units to other units to increase their power but that symbol is a different symbol and I'm not seeing it right off the top maybe it says in the card texts uh, yeah. anyway we'll go through it and if it comes up I'll point it out so you've got a defensive play ongoing so this would be equipped to something else it'd power it up do that kind of cool stuff and you've got just a vanilla spearman there no effects, no powers, nothing, just 2,000 strength. Another archer. Offensive ploy ongoing. Increase special damage dealt by your tactics or woo generals by 500. That's pretty cool. That's another bow of woo ability. A 
four drop character. All right, there we go. There are starting to be some of the symbols I was looking for. Uh, this last guy doesn't have it. Uh, this symbol down here underneath, it is a spearman, but it also does pierce. So if it's 3,000 strength is not completely stopped by your opponent's defenses, it will still do one damage to your opponent's wall. So we've got that sort of stuff. That's pretty cool. Another four drop. Now we're into the five drops. Six drops. And these are double breaking units, so they'll smash two parts of the opponent's walls. All right, so that was pretty strong. All right, and the, that's the other symbol here. This means you can equip this card to other generals. Every, any general can have one card equipped to it at any given point in time. So this is, uh, I believe that is the symbol that says that it is an equipment thing. All right, let's consult the rule book. Yeah, it's called uh, Reinforce. So this card has the Reinforce skill, and that allows it to be played as a equipped card to certain things. Uh, yep, strengthening phase. Yep. All right, so yeah, these cards can be played as generals on their own, or they can be equipped to other generals in play. Right, so. so that's Woo Archer. You've got Elite Archer that does the same thing for three. Now we've got a battle tactic. Now tactics work a little bit differently. Obviously they have a cost and they do have their own unique symbols. This means this card be can be played during a battle, uh, crossing sword, so it's kind of obvious. Uh, it's got its play effect. And then if this card happened to be in your wall and your opponent attacked that wall, you flip over that card. And the text down here in the black box would therefore activate, not the rest of it. So if this was you know, face down in your wall, your opponent attacks it, flipped it face up, the rest of it doesn't matter. Whatever is on this black line, you get to do. So that's pretty neat. A draw card when you lose something. All right. Exhaust an enemy general, also in battle, battle tactic. Ruthless advance. Naval combat, another battle action. Now that is another symbol here. That says it's a Spearman character. It does? No. No, that's uh, the timing for the tactic. All right, so this can be played during your main phase, not during a battle. So that's what that symbol there means. You can only play it during your main phase. You got two copies of that, of course. Again, during your main phase, exhaust one enemy general. Repair the wall. Ooh, I bet you that one's good. Draw a card from the top of your deck and add it to your wall. Yep. Draw a card from the top of your deck, add it to your wall. So whether you play it from hand or it gets flipped over from your wall, it's a self-replacing card. Very, very useful. Might of the Tiger. Two of those. Panzan. Big Game Hunter. All right, so that's got Pierce ability as well. Or, I guess not Pierce ability, but it's a Spearman character. Some more Archer characters. Let's see if they're going to focus or not. Right. Two of her. To that fellow as well. More Calvary. Archer. Ooh, that's cool art. Looks like a little uh, half orc or something, maybe. Cool.
colorful intimidation ongoing. He, Kui, may not be attacked or targeted by generals of four cost or less. That's... it could be beneficial, I can think. Zhu Shang, rebuilding tactics, had one card to your wall. Gains with a... ooh. That's really good. You can start manipulating the cards in your wall. That's pretty good. Last two. Let's see exactly what this thing does here. General Archer, quadruple archery ongoing. There are two more Wu Archer generals in your battle area. Each of four cost or higher, you may execute the following action. Main, exhaust, pay three, delay tactic, deal a thousand special damage four times for a total of four thousand special damage to up to four different enemy generals. This special damage may not be modified by other effects. So raining down the arrows. Cool, cool. Alright, so this would be the Wu section of cards, the blue colors. Um, I'll be doing the red and the green at another time, and we'll go through, build decks, and you can mix and match, but I'm probably just going to put together three solid color decks and then do a couple of gameplay videos showing those off. So, yep, that would be the blue stack of cards. And for the three... Yeah, War of the Three Kingdoms, the card game. Seems pretty fun. All right, again, the rule book is uh, up on the other other video. All right, YouTube, this is I'm Done, It's Over, signing off. Have a good one. Everybody stay safe.